Do you even have to be a talented photographer anymore? You can basically get any new camera, set it into auto mode. It's going to do a great job of exposing and setting white balance for you. But if you do take a horrible image with absolutely wrong settings, you can usually rescue that raw file using Photoshop or Lightroom or another editing program, but you still have to have some know-how. Until now, an artificial intelligence. And my buddy Pi Jerza recently came out with software called Impossible Things. He claims that this software can fix your photos no matter how bad they are. And not only that, it will add a professional look to your image. It will also find the subject, whiten teeth, brighten eyes. It will make your subject pop off of the background. All of these things totally automatically with a single click. Let's test this out. First, I had to find the perfect outfit for my very eager fashion model. You don't like your shirt? I can't take it off. Oh no. We then went outside and I shot some pictures with automatic camera settings. I was in Aperture Priority 2.8 uh, Auto White Balance. Now, obviously these photos look fine, but I really wanna stress test this software. So I started taking really bad photos. They look horrible. It's almost even difficult to see what's happening in some of these pictures. I over and underexposed by three full stops. I manually set the white balance all the way to 2500 Kelvin and then all the way up to 10,000 Kelvin to get crazy colors. And now I have chosen 12 very different images. These two correctly exposed, these two wildly overexposed. I got even a bird in here. And then very underexposed pictures that are too red and very underexposed pictures that are way too blue. Now, many people may not know this, but in Adobe Lightroom, you actually have automatic exposure options as well. So I wanna test that and I wanna compare it to this new software. Now to create a fair comparison, I'm going to make four copies of each image. I'm going to leave the first one as the original raw. I'm going to make the first copy by hitting Command apostrophe. And then I'm going to let Lightroom do auto exposure by hitting Command U. And then I'm going to let Lightroom do auto white balance by hitting Command Shift U. I'm going to copy this file again. I'm going to do the exact same thing, but I'm also going to add the Lightroom preset that we're going to be adding when we use impossible things in a second. The preset I'm going to use is called Modern and Soft Light. All right, let's get to the real test here. First of all, I'm going to make a fourth copy of all of these images. And with each one of these, I'm going to click on reset here to take them back to the original. And I'm going to go to file, plugin extras, edit photos. You can see impossible things right here. Now, this is the entire application right here. There's only a few things you can click. First of all, you're going to choose a preset. Some of these are included, some of them are for sale. I'm going to be using the Visual Flow Modern Look and then the Soft Light. There is Adaptive Lens Correction, which I would normally leave on, but that's going to brighten up vignettes and change lens warping and stuff. And just so we have a direct comparison, I'm going to uncheck that. And then Adaptive Noise Reduction, AI Enhanced Subject, that's going to actually find the subject and darken the background just a little bit so that the subject pops off. And then AI Retouch Portrait, that's going to brighten teeth, brighten eyes, and uh, may smooth skin on the face a little bit as well. And down here, you can see how much this costs. As far as I know, this software is free, but you have to pay per image. So it says right here, my current edit rate is six cents per image. This was definitely created with wedding or event photographers in mind where you're having to edit hundreds or potentially thousands of images at once. And you want a way to edit those pictures as quickly as humanly possible. Keep in mind, it's not free, but it is relatively cheap. And we're going to click proceed. So what it's doing right now is it's shrinking down all of these files, sending them to the cloud somewhere to some supercomputer, figuring out what the image is a picture of, and then sending that data back to your computer and boom, we are done. Now there's one final little step that you need to remember to do. This software has found the subject and the face and it's created a bunch of masks and it's done a lot of different things to each one of the people in these pictures. To get these edits to show up, we need to hit Command Option U. Let me show you quickly what those masks can do here. You can see this is after and before after and before. So it's it's finding the subject, it's darkening that background, making him pop just a little bit. It's brightening up his eyes just a little bit. And it's also brightening and whitening his teeth 
So what this does is just a little enhance on all of the pictures. Obviously you could take it further if you wanted to, but this is toned down enough that I don't think anybody is going to notice that there's uh, any funny business going on here. All right, let's start at the beginning and look at these shots. This is the original raw file. This is Lightroom's edits. This is Lightroom plus the visual flow preset. And this is impossible things with the exact same preset. Honestly, for this first one, I'm kind of on the fence. Maybe, maybe the Lightroom edit is a little bright. Maybe the impossible things is a little dark. I don't know. I think it's going to come down to personal preference. Let's move on. Original Lightroom edit with preset and impossible things. I personally prefer the impossible things shot here. I think the uh, Lightroom edit is a little overexposed. Moving on. Original Lightroom edit with preset, very overexposed. And uh, that's perfect. This is impossible things with the same preset. Huge difference here, huge difference. All right, so next shot, we have a bird. I have been warned by Pi. He was like, don't do animals. We, we haven't like trained our artificial intelligence overlord to figure out what birds are or what animals are. Just do people. And I was like, ah, I'm, I'm gonna try the bird. So original edit by Lightroom, it's pretty good edit. With the plugin, I feel like this is overexposed. And that's so similar. Maybe I prefer the impossible things. I would say this is a little overexposed as well. So no doubt better, <laughs> no doubt better, but um, still slightly overexposed. I would probably come in here and just move the exposure slider down just a little bit, somewhere right there. Next up, original. Lightroom edit almost did nothing with the preset, still underexposed and impossible things here. That looks perfect to me. Next up, original Lightroom edit with preset and impossible things. Again, no comparison here at all. I don't know why Lightroom got confused with those two shots. I got one more bird shot just to make Pi angry. Uh, very underexposed. Lightroom did a horrible job with the preset, still underexposed. That looks perfect to me. Uh, impossible things seem to get that one right on the money. Original Lightroom edit with the preset. I would say this is slightly underexposed. And that looks perfect. Maybe you could say this is like slightly overexposed. Maybe it needs to be like that. Next up, original Lightroom edit with the preset. That looks really good. I think that looks better. Okay, so this is with Lightroom's edits and this is with Impossible Things. Looks good. Next up, original Lightroom edit with the preset. That looks a little underexposed. And this is with Impossible Things. I would say that looks perfect to me. Next up, that looks really good. I feel like Lightroom did the best on this shot. This is with the preset. For this one, I think I prefer it before the preset. And final shot here, ooh. So, I don't know, maybe I would wanna be somewhere right in the middle. I feel like this is close. It's not an incorrect exposure, it's just maybe a little bright. This one, I think I like a little bit more, but I would say it's just a little dark. I would probably boost it just a little bit, something like that. But, um, but yeah, I think it did a good job. All right, final shot, original Lightroom edit with the preset. That looks good to me, that looks perfect. This is gonna be personal preference. Maybe for this particular image, I prefer it without the darker background. Maybe I like that the cooler color just a little bit, but again, personal preference. So what have we learned? Well, first of all, I am just shocked by how far you can push these RAW files. This was shot on the Sony a7 IV. And I mean, look at the original file and then look at where we're going to. And if you zoom in here, yeah, I see a little grain, but it doesn't look bad. I mean, if anything, that's in style. It looks more film-like. It's just wild how bad you can shoot and totally save it. That's crazy. The second thing that I'm very impressed by is for the most part, how well Lightroom does with the automatic settings that are built into Lightroom. 
In most cases, I would say it did a pretty decent job. It failed miserably at these dark shots at the beginning. I don't know why it was struggling so much with these shots. Like, that's very, very wrong. But, um, but for the most part, like this one, I would say that's like a perfect edit directly out of Lightroom automatically for free, which is awesome. There's no doubt that Impossible Things is better than Lightroom, but at the same time, you are having to pay per image. And I really think it's made with a very particular type of photographer in mind. If you're just shooting a few images at a time, there would be absolutely no reason to run it through a program like that. I don't even know that I would use the automatic settings on Lightroom because you have the time to sit there and fine tune it and make it look absolutely perfect because you only have a few images shot in one or two different scenes. If, however, you're a wedding photographer and you're shooting for like eight or 10 hours and there's two or three photographers and you want to edit that wedding as quickly as humanly possible, that's where software like Impossible Things really shines in my opinion. Now, it's certainly not perfect and I would never just hit edit and then send it to my client without checking all the files individually, but I think if you went through the culling process, you could do that relatively quickly. And then if your very first step after that was running it through Impossible Things, to get everything dialed into like 95%, then you could go through the images very quickly and just do very small fine tuning adjustments. For the most part, I mean, in all of these tests here, I don't think I saw any issues with color. It was really just an issue with exposure on a couple of these shots. They needed to be slightly darker, slightly brighter. You can change that so quickly in Lightroom. So, very interesting test, super cool software. I'm sure software like this is going to be coming out all the time. It's going to be getting better and better and better. Cameras are getting better, raw files are getting better. Truthfully, the, the need to be a detail-oriented, uh, knowledgeable photographer is getting smaller and smaller by the day. You can literally shoot almost anything and fix it in post now. And now you don't even have to know how to use the software. It will do it for you. If you happen to be a wedding photographer and you're looking for software like this to speed up your workflow, check out Impossible Things. And for everybody else who may not have thousands of images to edit all at once, you're probably not gonna be interested in Impossible Things, but definitely check out the automatic settings with Command U and Command Shift U in Lightroom. It's built in, it's free, and it does a surprisingly good job. Thanks for watching, guys. If you happen to be a professional photographer or maybe you're considering going pro, as always, check out fstoppers.com slash store. We have tons of full-length photography tutorials filmed with many of the best photographers in the world. Spoiler alert, I was just in Japan for a month filming another tutorial with Elia Licardi. We're currently in uh, post-processing. It's taking forever to edit, but it will be out soon, so stay tuned for that. And I think we have three or four other tutorials on landscape photography with Elia that you can buy right now.